There are trillions of invisible creatures living inside your body, and they are constantly talking. For centuries, we had no idea what they were saying. Now, scientists have just used a powerful AI to finally decode this secret language. We're talking about bacteria, and the messages they send control everything from your mood to your health. What they've learned is already changing medicine, but the thing nobody tells you is that this discovery also uncovered how these microbes organize, build cities, and even wage coordinated campaigns. The full story is stranger than fiction. The Tokyo Breakthrough There's a secret world living inside you, a bustling civilization that outnumbers your own cells ten to one. It's not human, but it influences what you crave, how well you sleep, and even how you feel. This world is made of trillions of bacteria, and for as long as humans have existed, they've been speaking a secret language. It's a language of chemicals, of signals, and broadcasts, and we've been completely deaf to it, until now. In a landmark announcement, a team of scientists at a cutting-edge biotech lab has revealed a stunning breakthrough. They built a new kind of artificial intelligence, a revolutionary program designed for one purpose, to crack the microbial code. To put it mildly, this AI is the Rosetta Stone for the bacterial world. For the first time, this program is decoding the complex chemical chatter of bacteria, translating their signals into data we can finally understand. This isn't just a science experiment. This is like finding the enemy's codebook in the middle of a conflict. You see, this bacterial language dictates everything in their world. It tells them when to form alliances, when to build fortified cities, and when to launch a coordinated advance against a threat. The thing nobody tells you is that these single-celled organisms are not acting alone. They are coordinating. They are communicating. And now, we finally know what they're plotting. To build this translator, scientists faced a challenge of immense scale. The AI had to be fed a mountain of data. We're talking petabytes of information, thousands of biological samples from a massive public health project. On one side, the AI was given a list of every bacteria species present in a sample, identified by its unique genetic fingerprint. On the other side, it got a complete profile of every single chemical or metabolite that those bacteria were producing. The AI's job was to find the pattern, to sift through millions of data points and figure out which bacteria was saying, which chemical word, and it worked. The AI, a special type of neural network, didn't just find simple links. It learned the grammar. It can now say with high certainty that this specific bug produces this specific signal, and that signal is meant to talk to that specific part of the body. What many overlooked is the sheer scale of this. Bacteria make up more than 99% of all living biomass on Earth. They are not just simple germs. They are the planet's hidden engineers. They run the nutrient cycles in the soil. They produce much of the oxygen we breathe from the oceans. And, as we now know, they run a communication network inside our gut that is more complex than our own internet. Before this AI, it was all guesswork. Scientists were like archaeologists finding strange, isolated symbols, guessing at what they meant. Now, they have a translator. They are, for the first time, listening in on conversations that are billions of years old. This breakthrough is the biggest news in this field, and it's already changing everything. The AI is revealing why some people get certain health problems and others don't. It's not just our genetics. It's the messages being sent by our microbial partners. For decades, we knew bacteria were talking. We saw the results of their conversations, a sudden infection, a change in mood, an improved immune system, but we never knew how they organized it. We were deaf. Now we can hear. But what exactly is this ancient language made of? Building a biofilm city. The secret language of bacteria isn't made of sounds or words. It's made of chemicals. It's a silent molecular morse code. A single bacterium floating alone is quiet. It goes about its business, just trying to survive. But when bacteria start to group up, they each release tiny chemical signals. These molecules, often called autoinducers, are like a single voice in a field whispering, I'm here. When just a few bacteria are around, these whispers get lost in the noise. The signals are too faint. They just float away and break down. But as the colony grows, the whispers get louder. More and more bacteria release their signals, and the concentration of this chemical chatter 
builds up. Suddenly, it crosses a line. It hits a critical level, a quorum. This is the moment the whispers become a shout. And when that shout happens, every single bacterium in the group hears it at the same time. This is where the real magic begins. That chemical signal is like a key in a lock. It fits into a receptor on each cell, and it flips a switch inside all of them. In an instant, they all change their behavior at the exact same time. This coordinated transformation is called quorum sensing. It's how a small, harmless group of bacteria transforms into a powerful, coordinated army. What many overlooked for years is that this is how infections can get so bad, so fast. A few nasty bugs in your system might not do much. They're in stealth mode, hiding from your immune system. But once they multiply to a critical number, they all shout at once, and boom. They all turn on their attack genes simultaneously. They start producing harmful substances and launch their assault as a unified, organized force. But not all things are what they seem. They don't just use this language for attacks. They use it to build. Bacteria use quorum sensing to construct one of the most amazing and problematic structures in nature, a biofilm. A biofilm is not just a slimy layer, it's a microbial city. Once the shout goes out, the bacteria stop swimming and start building. They produce a thick, sugary glue, a substance that is incredibly sticky and tough. They attach themselves to a surface, like your teeth, a medical implant, a contact lens, or a water pipe, and then they stick to each other. They build protective walls and towers out of this slime. To put it mildly, it's a fortress. Inside this city, the language gets even more complex. The bacteria start to specialize. Some become the builders, producing more of the slime. Some become defenders, pumping out chemicals to keep antibiotics away. Some become foragers, breaking down food for the whole community. They even leave channels and tunnels inside this city to move water and nutrients around, just like a canal system. And here's the kicker. This biofilm fortress is almost indestructible. Bacteria living inside can be up to 1,000 times more resistant to our defenses than their free-floating cousins. This is why some health problems are so hard to fix. The bugs are hunkered down in their slime city, and the chatter doesn't stop. Inside the city, different species of bacteria start trading. One bug might produce a chemical word that means, I have extra vitamin B. Another bug might say, I can't make that, but I can break down this complex sugar. Let's trade. They form alliances. They also wage chemical war. One colony will release a specific poison signal that is harmless to itself, but disastrous for a nearby competitor. It's a microscopic battle for territory. There are even cheater bacteria. These are bugs that have evolved to hear the shout, but not produce it. They're lazy. They wait for everyone else to do the hard work of building the fortress, and then they sneak in, taking advantage of the free protection and food. And here's the most important part. This chatter, this constant stream of chemical signals, isn't just for them. The chemicals they release, especially in our gut, get absorbed into our bloodstream. They travel all over our body, crossing barriers we thought were secure. They travel all the way to our brain. This is the gut-brain axis. These bacterial words can literally change our mood, make us feel anxious, or even signal that we are full. We are not just eavesdropping on their language. We are the main audience. Now that the new AI has the dictionary, what secrets did it translate? A gut bug's war cry. The new AI translator didn't just learn the alphabet of the bacterial language. It started translating entire books. Scientists immediately pointed the AI at some of our biggest medical mysteries, problems that have baffled researchers for decades, and the answers it found are, to be blunt, revolutionary. The first test was on sleep. This is a mystery that affects millions. Scientists took samples from two groups, people with healthy, restful sleep patterns and people with severe, chronic sleep disorders. They fed all the data to the AI, the bacteria list, the chemical list, everything. The AI churned through the information, looking for the pattern. It spat out a name, not just one bug, but a whole community of them, all working together. But one species, a common gut bug, was the star. In the healthy sleepers, this bacteria was thriving. In the poor sleepers, it was almost gone. But here's the why. The AI drew a direct line, a chain of command. It found that Bug A was a specialist at breaking down plant fiber. Bug B then ate the waste from Bug A. 
and in doing so, Bug B released a very specific chemical word as its waste. The AI identified this chemical. It was a precursor for GABA. If you've ever felt anxious, you might have heard of GABA. It's the human brain's main chill-out signal. It's the brake pedal for your brain, telling it to slow down, relax, and prepare for rest. The AI had found the source. This bacteria was basically talking to the vagus nerve, the superhighway that connects the gut and brain by sending it the raw materials for GABA. This signal was calming the brain. The AI had translated the bacterial signal for it's time to rest. Many people are crazy about that finding, but the next one is even more serious. The AI was pointed at a massive study on heart health and diet. This time it found a bad actor, a group of bacteria called Dieselfovibrio. The AI noticed something strange. When people in the study ate foods high in a nutrient called choline, like red meat and eggs, this Dieselfovibrio bug would eat it but then it would release its own signal as a waste product, a nasty chemical called TMA. Our body then absorbs this TMA and, in the liver, converts it into an even worse compound, TMAO. TMAO is a huge red flag for heart specialists. It's directly linked to making your blood vessels sticky and stiff, which can lead to blockages. For years, scientists argued about whether it was just the red meat or something else. The AI solved the debate. It proved it was a two-step process. It was the bacteria's action. The AI had decoded the entire enemy battle plan. Step one, person eats a steak. Step two, the Dieselfovibrio bug in their gut talks by releasing the TMA signal. Step three, that signal causes damage to the person's heart. The AI found the smoking gun, but the most chilling translation came from cancer research. Scientists fed the AI data from colorectal tumors. The AI found a very specific bug, Fusobacterium nucleatum, living deep inside the tumors, not just around them. What many overlooked was what it was doing there. The AI analyzed the chemicals in the tumor and found this bacteria was releasing a war cry. It was pumping out specific sugar signals. This signal the AI discovered was not for other bacteria, it was for us. This bacterial word was fueling the tumor's growth. It was like a spy living in a fortress, sending out signals that strengthened the enemy, helping the tumor grow and resist our immune system. Even worse, the AI found a second signal. This bug was also releasing a false flag message. It was a chemical that talked to our immune cells, basically telling them, move along, nothing to see here, we're friendly. It was actively helping the tumor hide. We thought we were fighting one battle, but this AI revealed there's a microbial traitor inside, speaking a language we couldn't understand. These discoveries are shocking, but what can we actually do about it? The superorganism question. This new AI translator doesn't just let us listen to bacteria, it lets us talk back. We are now on the verge of hacking the microbial network. The implications of this are staggering, and it starts with medicine. Forget the generic probiotics you buy at the store. We are now entering the age of personalized, AI-designed, smart probiotics. You see, if the AI knows that the Disulfovibrio bug is sending the dangerous TMAO signal, we can design a new bacteria to fight it. We could create a probiotic that jams its signal. This is a real field called quorum quenching. It's like broadcasting static over an enemy radio frequency. The bacteria try to shout to launch their attack, but they can't hear each other. Their coordination collapses, but now we can go even further. Why just jam the signal when you can hijack it? Imagine a Trojan horse probiotic. We design a harmless bug that releases a fake signal. This fake signal is so convincing that it tricks the harmful bacteria. It could be a message that says, warning, a new competitor is here. Build your biofilm walls. The bad bacteria waste all their energy building defenses against a phantom enemy. And in the process, they stop reproducing and attacking us. Or even better, a fake signal that tells them to self-destruct. The thing nobody tells you is that this goes way beyond our gut. The source material for this new research points to agriculture. The soil under our feet is a massive bacterial network. There's a famous bug called rhizobia that talks to plants like soybeans and peas. It sends a chemical signal that tells the plant, I'm friendly, let me in. The plant then forms a special root nodule and the bacteria lives inside, pulling nitrogen, a vital fertilizer, right out of the air. Now we can use this AI to decode that entire conversation. We could optimize it. We could engineer bugs or plants that talk more efficiently. 
We could soon have the ability to grow crops in poor soil anywhere in the world, all without using a single drop of industrial fertilizer. But why stop there? The AI could help us find bugs that send drought resistance signals to plants, telling them to conserve water, or bugs that release a signal that tastes bad to pests, creating a natural defense system. And it goes even further into ecology and new. Materials Scientists are planning to use this AI to eavesdrop on coral reefs. When coral gets stressed by warm water, it sends out chemical panic signals right before it bleaches and turns white. By placing sensors on the reef, this AI could listen for that specific signal. It could act as an early warning system telling us a reef is in trouble before the damage is done. Some bacteria talk to each other to build materials. There are microbes that can create bio-cement to repair cracks in concrete. Others can produce biodegradable plastics. Now that we can decode their language, we could theoretically program them. We could give them a set of chemical instructions to build a computer chip or a self-repairing fabric. But let's take a step back. People watching this are probably wondering, is this all true? Did this revolution really happen overnight? Are we missing a key detail? The thing is, this AI is an unbelievably powerful correlation engine. It is the best tool ever built for finding patterns and links. It finds the bug and the chemical together. But in science, a link is not always causation. The next step is to prove these links in the lab, one by one. That work is starting now. But here's the real mystery. What if we are thinking too small? We're talking about decoding a language. But what does a language imply? A single bacterium is, for all intents and purposes, a dumb, simple machine. It just reacts. But what about a trillion of them? All talking at once, all coordinating, building cities, managing resources, and manipulating the giant vehicle they live inside, us. When does a colony become a super organism? It's a question we usually reserve for ants or bees, vast communities moving with a single unified purpose. But what if the same question applies to us? We know we aren't alone. We carry trillions of microbes, bacteria, fungi, and viruses in and on our bodies. For decades, we dismiss them as simple passengers, hitchhikers just along for the ride. Some are helpful, some are harmful, but we were always the ones in charge. Or were we? What many overlooked is that we might not just be a person with some bacteria. We might be a walking, talking ecosystem. Think of it. The microbial cells in your body outnumber your human cells. Their collective genetic information dwarfs our own. This isn't a partnership of equals. It's a vast, ancient, and incredibly complex community that has been evolving for billions of years, which has now formed a perfect symbiosis with a human host. When does quorum sensing, the ability of bacteria to communicate and coordinate behavior, become group consciousness? What if we are a mobile home for a microbial superbrain? Think about it. When you have a gut feeling, is that just a hunch? A subconscious flicker of your own mind? Or is it a literal chemical message sent from this second brain, transmitted up the vagus nerve directly to your primary brain? This gut community produces the vast majority of your body's serotonin, the happiness molecule. Is it possible that your mood isn't entirely your own? Could feelings of anxiety or depression be, in part, a signal of distress from this microbial world within? It gets deeper. When you crave a certain food, that intense, undeniable urge for sugar or fat, or something specific, is it you craving it? Or is it the bacterial community in your gut and sending a hunger signal to your brain so you'll feed them? They have the power to reward us with good-feeling chemicals when we eat what they want and make us feel bad when we don't. Who is really in control? Are your desires, your choices, and even parts of your personality being subtly steered by a hidden intelligence you can't see or hear? That's speculation, of course. But what is real is that we have opened a door. For our entire history, we've been deaf to the planet's most dominant and ancient form of life. We walked the Earth believing we were singular, independent beings, the masters of our own minds and bodies. Now, we are learning that we are multitudes. We are a chorus. For the first time, we've joined the conversation. We are just beginning to translate the signals to understand the secret language of life itself. And what it's telling us might change our definition of what it means to be human.